Hello Booktube! Welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth and this summer I participated in the Summer Romance Book Bingo. It was co-hosted and created by Sarah from Not Just Romance Novels and Sissy or Kim from uh, The Romance Queen of Booktube and at first I didn't think I was gonna go for a blackout. I didn't think that uh, I was gonna be able to you know, do a blackout and still stick very close to my original TBR, but I was. Uh, I did a full blackout and I really only had to pick one book that was not on my TBR at all and maybe two or three others that were so far down my TBR I wouldn't have gotten to them for a long time, but because of the book bingo I ended up moving them up and, uh, and read them this summer anyway. So I did a video a few weeks ago showing you the 15 series books that I used for the different bingo challenges and so for this video I have 10 more and they're all standalone books and that uh, will complete my whole bingo card and these are in no certain order because as I explained before and as you probably know if you have uh, been participating in the book bingo everybody's card looked different. They were the same 25 challenges but all the challenges moved around every time you refresh the card with the exception of Reader's Choice which was in the middle. So there's not really a certain order to do these in. But the first four books that I read that counted for challenges, the first four romances that I read, were kind of because of the Amish and April readathon that, of course, we did in April. And I had a book left over from that that I didn't get to called An Amish Love. It contains three novellas by Beth Wiseman, Kathleen Fuller, and Kelly Long. And I had uh, an extra copy of this, which I did a giveaway for during the month of April. And Sissy, the Romance Queen of Booktube, won that. And at the time, we talked about possibly buddy reading it. So we ended up buddy reading this uh, early on in the... Uh, book bingo time frame and I believe we both counted it as our reader's choice square. Now I put it there just because I wanted all four of these Amish books to count for something so I had already used up the inspirational category and uh, and also the less than a thousand reviews category and uh, and strangely enough the medical category so that uh, the only other place I could find to put this one was reader's choice so I ended up filling that space up pretty quickly. So what I did was um, when we decided to read this I uh, I didn't realize very quickly that this edition actually is available on CD at my library and so before I even happened to think about checking my library <laughs> I looked on Hoopla and while I don't think it was on Hoopla. Actually, it might have been. But the interesting thing is that all three of the novellas in An Amish Love were later published in separate books by each of those authors with some of their other novellas. So uh, I found all of them on Hoopla. So I ended up reading a total of four Amish books and of uh, the three stories in here, I listened to those three stories twice by different narrators too, so that was interesting. And my library only had physical copies of two of the other books, but I'll tell you about all of them. So the Beth Wiseman book is called Healing Hearts, which is the name of the short story that is included in this book. The other two stories are called A Change of Heart and A Choice to Forgive. So I counted this as my inspirational uh, square, and uh, I can't remember a whole lot about it now, but you know, it was good. I enjoyed it. I don't think it was my favorite of all four of these, but uh, but I thought it was definitely worth reading, and I'm interested in reading more books by Beth Wiseman. I have several of these bind-ups that are by m multiple authors, and Beth Wiseman is one of those authors that in is included in a lot of these books. They're published, I believe, by Thomas Nelson, so uh, I'm definitely interested in reading more, and I'll probably save some of them for next April. Then the... Uh, other one that I have here, I counted this as my a square for read a book with less than a thousand reviews. And it is called What the Heart Sees by Kathleen Fuller. The stories in here are A Miracle for Miriam, A Place of His Own, and of course What the Heart Sees, which is the story that was featured in this book. And uh, this was good too. Um, Goodness, I wish I could remember. I should have taken some notes. But, you know, they're all kind of your typical Amish stories. Um, 
if there is a typical <laughs> Amish toys. Uh, I don't know. They, they were good. There is a Christmas story in each of these books, and um, and those were good. It felt kind of weird listening to a Christmas book in the middle of everything else, in the middle of summer, but oh well, why not? Uh, but the one I do remember the most about, strangely enough, is the one I don't have. And uh, the reason is for that is because I counted it for my book featuring someone in the medical profession. And it was called A, uh, a Marriage of the Heart. And it featured another story called Christmas Cradles. And that was about a midwife. And it was such a good story. I really enjoyed it. The, the midwife is late 20s, mid to late 20s, so by Amish standards, she's already kind of an old maid, and she goes to a community where she doesn't live, but where her aunt lives. Her aunt is also a midwife, and her aunt wants to take Christmas off and is traveling, but she has three women who are about to deliver. So our main character comes in to help her aunt take over for her, basically, for Christmas, and just in case any of these ladies... Or, you know, end up giving birth the one night that her aunt is going to be gone. And, of course, they all do. And uh, there is a gentleman who comes to help her. Uh, I think her aunt had told him, you know, be on call in case she has to go. You know, I think she's probably going to need to go and visit the ladies. And um, so there's a little bit of a, a, a romance. He, I believe... He, well, he's, of course, a bachelor. He's a little older, and I don't know if he'd been married before, and his wife died, or his fiance died. I don't know, but he had kind of just said, you know, no more. I, I, I'm not going to get involved in a, you know, I'm not going to court anybody. I'm not going to try to get married. I'm just, you know, uh, enough. And so, of course, she's not thinking anything about any kind of a relationship. She is just focused on her career as a midwife. And it's just a really fun story about, it is so sweet, about them going, you know, around Amish country visiting these ladies who do, you know, spoilers, who do end up giving birth all on Christmas Eve. So it's called Christmas Cradles. And I just thought it was such a good book, such a good story. And uh, I would definitely be interested in reading it again. In fact, I will probably read the book called An Amish Christmas, which includes the Christmas stories from each of these three books, as well as one more that I haven't read. So that'll be fun. I'm looking forward to that. So those are my four Amish books. Now, my other six books were mostly contemporary. One of them is inspirational, but still contemporary. One of them is YA, um, but still contemporary. And then one of them is what I would consider kind of a classic. So I'll start with that. And it was also a reread. I listened to on audio, Kill Many of the Orchard by Lucy Maud Montgomery. I had read this in print a long time ago. I didn't remember anything about the story, but I listened to it on audio on Hoopla. And I will have to write the narrator's name down below. Uh, this is just a tiny little story. Uh, I think I sped it up and I was done with it in just like an hour, a little over an hour. So it is, it's a very short book, but it's very sweet. It's about a young woman who is mute, uh, or maybe deaf, maybe both. Um, anyway, she has just basically kind of been written off by everyone and, and that, uh, she'll never be able to get married. She'll always be a burden to her parents because of this disability. And she's very shy. She's never really been around people. In fact, I believe if I recall correctly, her family has told her that men are evil. Stay away from men. They'll just take advantage of you. And so she's out in her, uh, orchard one day and, um, this gentleman is visiting someone else nearby and he's out for a walk and happens to see her and of course she runs away terrified at first and eventually he befriends her and, and they fall in love and it goes on from there but it's just a really sweet story it's making me want to go back and reread all of of uh, I keep saying Grace of Hill Lucy Maud Montgomery's books I've read I think everything that's ever been published by Lucy Maud Montgomery and even her short story collections and all of that and I just love her stories and her books I mean just there's so many good things way over and above Anne of Green Gables. Now, I love Anne of Green Gables. That's probably my favorite thing by her. But everything else she wrote, uh, I just loved as well. So, anyway, Kill Many of the Orchard. <clears throat> then, um, on uh, another audio book, <clears throat> actually two more audios and then two print books. 
actually three more audios. I uh, listened to a YA book, and this is on the Audible Romance Package. This particular print copy is uh, my daughter's. She read this two or three summers ago. This is Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson. It's my first Morgan Matson. I liked it okay, but I had some mixed feelings about it. I don't know. Something just didn't mesh right with me uh, for some of it, but it's basically a cute, fun story about a friend who leaves without a uh, without a word other than a list of things for her friend to do while she's gone and she doesn't know where her friend went she's basically this whole summer she's looking for her meanwhile she decides to do the list she does do a lot of growing a lot of maturing and um it, it's a cute story and uh definitely you know worth taking a look at and i am interested in reading some more of morgan matson's books uh probably my favorite book Actually, I thought I had another, you know, I do. no, okay. I'll get to my favorite book at the end because it was a print book. I want to get all my audio books out of the way. So I listened to Now That You Mention It by Kristen Higgins. This is the one that I probably wouldn't have ever really sought out and read if I hadn't had to read a book on the read a finalist list. And uh, I did really enjoy it. It's not completely my type of book. There's a lot of stuff in there that I don't agree with, don't condone, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, it's not a clean book. There's definitely some swearing and some sex and stuff like that. But overall, the storyline... I enjoyed. I thought it was uh, it was really interesting and fun. I can't even remember a lot about it now, <laughs> but uh, uh, I remember that I did enjoy it more than I really thought I would. And I haven't read anything by Kristen Higgins prior to this. Um, I'm trying to think what it is about now because it is completely escaping me. Um, it's a, a woman goes back to her hometown. Oh, she was in an accident. She was hit by a car and she goes back home to recover. And she had had kind of a rough growing up. She's not really crazy about, um, seeing a lot of the people that she knew as a, as a young child and as a teenager. Um, but it, it goes okay. And, um, and things happen and, you have a story. So that's all I'm really going to say about it because I can't remember a lot of details. Um, in print, I have three more. Uh, I read The Vintage Teacup Club by Vanessa Green. Oh, did I tell you everything that... Uh, okay, I read this for the prompt to read a book you bought just for the cover. And I tell you, the cover was better than the actual book. The book wasn't bad. I just had a really hard time getting into it. It's basically from three different three different perspectives, three different women who basically all at the same time find this vintage tea set at a, a you know this is a European book, a car boot sale. <laughs> Here we would call it a trunk sale. Um, and they, uh, they, they all kind of see it all, all at the same time and they decide to share it. One of them is getting married. The other one is a florist and she's trying to plan a wedding and she has an idea for using teacups in the wedding decor. And then uh, the other one is um, uh, very crafty and she likes she makes candles to sell and she uses teacups and pours the wax in the teacups and sells those as candles. So um, she's going to be the they, they agree to, to share it. So the girl who who is having her wedding first is going to use them first and then the florist is going to take them and use them for the wedding that she's got coming up that she's supposed to do the flowers for and then the last one will make candles out of them and sell them and so I'm, I'm assuming that they split the cost of them then they continue to meet up throughout the book searching for more teacups and more tea sets and by the end of the book they have amassed quite a large amount of uh teacups and china and, and things like that and so that's sort of the catalyst that takes us through the book but each of the three characters are in a different place in their romantic lives we have one that's getting married we have one that is married with children and then the other one is divorced so we get to you know read about each of their stories and and what's going on in their personal life and it is a really interesting book it just didn't grab me right at the beginning i started it and then i ended up putting it down and reading some other stuff and then i finally picked it back up right at the end of August and finished it, uh, I had to just break it up into parts and say, okay, I'm going to read X number of pages every day until I get this read. By the second half or even really the last third, it started, you know, picking up for me. And so, uh, so it, it wasn't a bad book. I, I don't know if I just wasn't in the right mood for it or, or what. I don't know. Now, another book that I thought I would love, and I ended up really not liking it that much, 
Uh, this is Oklahoma Reunion by Tina Radcliffe. It's a love-inspired book. I read this for the prompt to read a category, a Harlequin category romance. So uh, the word Harlequin is nowhere in this book, and I had to write Sarah and say, is love-inspired a, a Harlequin book? And she said, yes, it is. So um, so anyway, I, I read this, and what I didn't like about it <clears throat> is that I thought that these love-inspired books were technically supposed to be Christian books. Maybe, I mean, I guess not technically because it's inspirational doesn't necessarily have to mean Christian, but it does start out with a Bible verse. And so I had that expectation going in. But there, I don't want to get into too much of this now. Really, you could look at my Goodreads review because I, I, pretty much spelled it out there, what bothered me about this book. It starts out with a, uh, uh, it's a couple, they mm -hmm. knew each other in high school, and then they split up, uh, I believe she just kind of disappeared, and he, and then they're, now they're meeting back together, not on purpose, they run into each other eight years later, and she has a daughter who is his daughter, but he never knew it, and the daughter is just as sweet as all get out, I mean, she is super cute, adorable. And the couple are both, um, you know, they talk about their faith, you know, they're Christians and, you know, whether they were Christians at the time that they were sleeping together, it doesn't really say, you know, of course, Christians all sin. We all do. We all mess up. My problem is that because it's a Christian book or so I thought it was, there should have been some acknowledgement of wrongdoing initially. Not to say, uh, of course, God works all things together for good for those that love him. That's scriptural. So, yes, they have this beautiful daughter, and they can go on from here and have a fantastic relationship, and everything is great. Uh, this book is technically a clean book. I just kept waiting for them to say, you know, we really got things out of order. We shouldn't have done that when we were kids you know, when we were teenagers, and that didn't ever happen. So that, I just kept waiting for that, and it didn't happen, and so it bothered me a little bit, because I think in a Christian book, when you've got, you know, as you're working the story along, you've got to have a starting point where you, you know, you acknowledge whatever's wrong, and then you work through it and let God heal you and take care of you on into that point, the next, you know, the next chapter of your life. And uh, that just didn't happen in this book. Um, I did read the author's note and it says that the main character in this story was actually a, like a side character in a previous book. And I would be interested to read that just because I'm wondering how that went. Um, and my library doesn't have it. So I got to try to find it on ebook or something. It's called a rancher's reunion. So, um, Anyway, I'm on the lookout for that. If any of you guys ever see that at a book sale or something, let me know. I'll send you some money and you can send it to me. Uh, anyway, so um, just curious about it. Overall, it wasn't a bad story. It was a sweet story. Like I said, I love the little girl and and the family members and everything. Uh, it was an interesting story. That just But that one thing was a deal breaker. So anyway, um, <clears throat> last one, my favorite. Okay, I've been reading a lot of Jody Thomas books this summer, and I wanted to keep reading Jody Thomas books, and I had to read something that was published in 2018. And it just so happened that Jody Thomas published a standalone book in 2018, because she publishes so many series books that uh, I, you know, I didn't want to start another series when I'm already in the middle of two of her series, and um, I couldn't skip ahead in any of the series that I'm reading and read something from 2018. So it worked out great. What I read was Mornings on Maine, and I loved this. <clears throat> Excuse me. I loved it. It is about a woman who has always been a drifter. She was basically taught to be a drifter from her father. She never knew her mother. And her father, she hasn't seen him in quite a few years because he he raised her, dropped her off at college, and said, you know, you're on your own now, and left. And she hasn't seen him since then. So there's the mystery of where her father is, what's happened to her father, and and she herself has maintained that sort of drifting lifestyle. He basically taught her how to be a survivor and how to, you know, make money and not, uh, you know, how to get jobs and keep jobs for however long you need them and then be able to move on without leaving 
things behind and without, um, you know, what am I trying to say? You know, just, just being able to sever your ties, and, you know, and, and keep going. And she has enjoyed that lifestyle up to this point, but now she has ended up in a small town in Texas, and the job that she has gotten is to work at a quilt shop the mayor of the town also runs a small free newspaper and she sees a help wanted sign in his window and thinks she's interviewing for a job at the newspaper. He's like, no, no, I don't need help here. It's my mother or my grandmother across the street. She's getting senile dementia and things like that. And she's got the whole town's history wrapped up in quilts that are in her shop. And I need someone to go in and talk to her, get their stories while she's still lucid and while she can still remember the stories of the quilts, catalog them because at some point we're going to have to close the quilt shop and all these quilts are going to go to the town museum. So that's her job basically is to help run the quilt shop, catalog the quilts and go from there. So right away we've got a mystery, we've got quilts, um, we've got a small town, it just checks off a lot of my boxes. It's just such an interesting story. When I had just barely gotten started with it. I was talking to my sister on the phone and I said, oh, I've got a book for you. You got to read this book. It's awesome. And uh, I think she has gotten it at, uh, at this point and, uh, and has read it. So uh, anyway, I love this book. It's really great. As of right now, it's a standalone, but I see so many ways it could go as a series. I really hope it becomes a series. If it doesn't, that's okay. It's still an awesome book and my favorite of all summer. So uh, this was for a uh, read a book that was set in 2018, and it's. I feel like I missed one. I feel like I didn't say what box they were. I think it was this one. Um, I read this for the prompt to read a standalone book, and all ten of these books are standalone. So any of them would have fit that uh, prompt, but this is the one that I counted for that. And I. I think I told you what each of the other books counted for. If I didn't, I'll put it in the description below. So since then, I have read a few other romance books, and I will just briefly mention them. On Abridged Audio, I listened to Whiskey Island by Emily Richards. The abridged portion of this is really more romantic suspense, mystery, than actual romance. It's a pretty thick book. I saw that it was available on the Audible Romance Package, and it was just like a three-hour abridgment. And I went ahead and listened to it just kind of to see if it's something I thought I would like. And I don't know. I have mixed feelings about it. Uh, it didn't really grab me. But then again, that could just be because it was an abridged version. I don't know. I'm, I'm still going to keep it on my shelf. I might at some point tackle the whole thing. I don't know. I couldn't find the whole thing on audio, just the abridged version. Um, then I did read a few other series books. I mentioned the uh, Jody. I mentioned Jody Thomas, and I uh, read uh, the second book in her Harmony series during the bingo. And then since then, I have read the third book, which is The Comforts of Home. Really thoroughly enjoyed this. And then also by Jody Thomas, I had started uh, because I needed a cowboy romance. I started the Whispering Mountain series, and uh, I read the first one or the first two. I guess the first one's called Texas Rain. I read that for the bingo. And then book two, I didn't like so much. It was called Texas, uh, it is called Texas Princess. And this one got pretty steamy. The first book really wasn't that steamy. And maybe her publisher said, okay, you gotta, you know, make this one a little juicier. Uh, but I just, I didn't like it. I didn't think it was appropriate for this 1800s Texas Ranger kind of a book. And um, so I wasn't a fan of it. And so thankfully, book three went back to more the level of uh, the first book, and it is called Tall, Dark, and Texan. Uh, these first three books center around three brothers, and their uh, mother was Apache, their father was a rancher, and they um, uh, their parents both have both passed away when they were young. Actually, I think their mother died when she was giving birth to their sister, who was the youngest. So there's four siblings. And so each of the first three books are about the romances of the brothers. And then the fourth book, which is my favorite so far, is the romance of the sister, who is now grown up and an adult and a doctor. And um, the, the love interest in the book is actually, he's a little bit younger than her, but we meet him when they're both still kids in the earlier books. And I mean, he's practically feral. He's just like, 
oh my goodness, but he goes through a lot of growth and a lot of changes, and he actually comes out to be a very, uh, very respectable person considering what he has gone through in his childhood. So um, anyway, I loved this one. I thought it was great. It's called The Lone Texan, and there are still, I think there's a total of seven books, seven or eight books in the series. They're all on the Audible Romance Package, and I will definitely be listening to the rest of the series. So I'm excited about those. Um, then in the month of um, this month, I have already read at least one romance. I read Map of the Heart by Susan Wiggs. I picked this up because Sarah from Not Just Romance Novels just raved about it, went on and on, and it sounded so good, but I don't know. It wasn't really my type of book. Uh, well, I say that, and, and it, parts of it were, but it was kind of... Um, it was a two-part book, and I didn't know going into it that there was going to be a big historical aspect. I was just looking for a nice contemporary romance, and there was such a big part of it that was historical, and I just wasn't in the mood for that. And it just seemed like those parts just drug on and on, and and I think that was just me. And also, I didn't really like the narrator. I'd be curious to find out if Sarah listened to this on audio or if she read it in print. I think I would have enjoyed it a lot more if I had just read it in print. There were certain ways that the narrator pronounced things that pulled me out of the story and made me notice, oh, she's pronouncing that like that, <laughs> you know. And her voicing of the male characters, especially the main male lead, sounded like like he was trying to be sultry even when he was just talking and he sounded like Kathleen Turner <laughs> so I mean I know it's not that easy for a female to sound like a legitimate male character but some people are able to pull it off and this narrator who I sorry I don't remember the name I'll have to type it in below uh, I just didn't feel like she accomplished that very well and it pulled me out of the story and made me hear the narrator as opposed to hear the story so uh so that i didn't really enjoy um but speaking of sarah we are going to be buddy reading this one next month which is another susan wiggs book i really hope i'm going to enjoy this this is the book she, that she has sitting on her shelf if you watch her videos it's called the apple orchard so i am looking forward to that um then a couple of other books that i in well, one that I did read and one that I'm going to read are part of the Butternut Lake series. I did read uh, two or three of those for the bingo. And uh, the next, well, let's see, book 2.5 I read on my Kindle. It didn't count for the bingo, but it was a little Christmas novella where uh, it was basically the wedding story of a couple of characters that were introduced in book two. And then uh, on my TBR, I've got book four, The Space Between Sisters. These are by Mary McNear, and it's the Butternut Lake series. So this I have uh, checked out from the library, and I haven't gotten to it yet, but I intend to very soon. Uh, and then... Sarah, in case you're wondering, um, she read this book back for the Amish Readathon, The Amish Widow's Secret by Cheryl Williford. And when I was looking for a category romance, she suggested this one. And I checked it out from the library because this is an Amish story set in Florida. I didn't even realize there was an Amish community in Florida. Apparently there is. But because I went ahead and read a book off my shelf, The Oklahoma Reunion, for that category, then uh, I am going to... Um, save this for next year and I'll have one ready to go for the uh, for that challenge that prompt for next year so I'm going to return this to the library unread and I think excuse me and I think that's all the romances that uh, that I've read recently or that I'm uh, about to read within the next little while or that I didn't get to and that I'm postponing and all of that. So uh, basically, that's everything for now. And that's all for this video. I hope that uh, you enjoyed it. And if you've read any of these books, let me know what you thought of them. Or if anything sounds interesting to you and you want to chat about it, then I hope you will leave me a comment down below. So that's all for this video. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.